Hey guys, it's Sam here back, finally back with another video. It's been way too long, actually. It's been almost two months since I've recorded a video and there's a lot of good excuses for that. Uh, mainly because I've moved from South Carolina to Texas now and I've changed jobs, bought a new house, sold a house, and now I've got almost also a seventh month old little, little guy running around here. So talk about busy, right? And well, that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because from, you know, you can see from the title here, uh, with this new house, I have access to AT&T U-verse fiber. And this house is a brand new construction. So uh, I wanna show you guys what the network situation looks like with a brand new construction house. Um, and also show you guys what an AT&T U-verse install or AT&T fiber install looks like. And then show you guys my network setup. So I'm gonna be talking about a handful of things. I'll make sure to put the stamp, timestamps down below so you can jump to wherever you want. But and, and and check that out. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Like I said, this is a brand new construction house, so this is going to be representative to houses built in the last handful of years. Uh, this house has Ethernet drops in most of the rooms. So in the bedrooms, in the family room, this right here, this is a game room and I've got the ethernet wire uh, in the wall. It's all collected, it runs through the attic into a master closet, utility closet where all the ethernet cable comes in. Uh, that's kind of nice to have, you know, when you're, when you're trying to get everything wired up uh, on a new construction, they tend to do that these days. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, or we didn't get to do a lot of the customizing because this house was pretty far along by the time we got around to seeing it and then deciding to purchase it. So all of the wires inside this house are all Cat 5E instead of Cat 6 or Cat 6A. However, for the most part, this is only a 2,500 square foot house, uh, single story though, but uh, even still, the runs aren't particularly long. So the desire, my desire to go 10 gigabit ethernet on all of the connections over Cat 5 e shouldn't be a problem because at most it's 15, 20 meters, uh, you know, 50 to 70 feet at the maximum. So even though Cat 5 e isn't rated for 10 gigabit, uh, it should be fine, especially at those shorter lengths. Maybe in another video, we'll talk about the exact performances once I get all of my computer stuff unboxed. <laughs> if you could only see behind the camera, there's so many boxes everywhere. Uh, it's a disaster right now. So maybe in a future video, we'll take a look at the performance of that, of, of Cat 5e over 10, gig, 10 gigabit over Cat 5e, and it'll be interesting to test. Now let's take a little field trip over here, over to the master bedroom. And here you can see we've got all of the ethernet connectors coming in uh, from, you know, up here in basically in the attic, all of the, Cables are run up there, and we also have the coax cable, cable TV connectors all coming into one place. In a relatively uh, new construction, a lot of the houses, like I said, have these network cables, boxes, or cabinets, um, which is really nice. And here we've got a conduit where uh, this goes to the outside of the house, it runs through the attic, and the AT&T guy, you know, they come with, they do the cable pull to the house and then they put it into the conduit. And luckily there is a string that's in here where they tie it and then they come in and actually was pulling on the string until the cable came out. And then the AT&T guy terminates the fiber connection. And you can see here, the fiber connection is actually just that white little cable inside this black thick insulated or uh, insulation uh, the fiber is really really small and it goes into this box then converts into a signal here and goes into the bw320-500 gateway router wi-fi router um, it processes the signal and you can use this uh, this is from at&t if you decide to just use this you're fine but uh, if you want to get the most out of the internet 
especially if you've got a two or five gigabit connector connection, you want to connect it to the wired connection. There is a blue ethernet connection right here. This is the five gig ethernet uh, port. And you can see I've got a cable here that goes into this network stack. This, this right here, this is a Ubiquiti Unify system. I've got the Dream Machine Pro SE. Uh, this acts as my router gateway. I've got a patch panel and then I've got a link aggregation switch. Now this is a 10 gigabit link aggregation switch with six, six, eight, I can't count, eight connections. These are 10 gigabit SFP connections. I've got SSP, SFP to RJ45 all connecting into the patch panel, which is wired into these cables here, which then go to the rest of the house. What's unique about the Dream Machine Pro SE, again, this is my router basically, is that I've got either a 2.5 gigabit ethernet uh, WAN port or a SFP 10 gigabit. So if I decide to use the AT&T 10 or 5 gig, then I would use this right here currently because I can get away without having an SFP connection. I just use the 2.5 gigabit for right now my service is only two gigs. I know only two gigs, right? But uh, if I do decide to go to that five, then again, I'll use that. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of, this is the network setup I've got right here. Uh, Unify Ubiquity, it runs uh, the Unify OS. It has a lot of nice graphical interfaces and a lot of configurability. Uh, it's really overkill for a house setup, but it does have a lot of features um, and is really geared towards enterprise. And if I had one gripe about this setup right here, it would be that this is geared very geared towards enterprise where there's a lot of power over ethernet uh, capabilities as well as uh, one a lot of one gigabit switches. So uh, because it's enterprise, enterprise really doesn't need more than one gig. Uh, all of the 10 gig switches are really meant for uh, the backbone of one gig switches. So you have like a 48 one gig switch connected to 10 gig going into link aggregation switch. The link aggregation switch is mainly meant for connecting t multiple 10 gig switches. Uh, but again, you can see I am using it as just a, just a switch for these connections up here so that I can have 10 gigs connections to the rest of the house through all of the ports. Um, I will have switches you know, in the game room, switches in the YouTube studio to kind of break it up a little bit to have more connections. But basically this right here, this is gonna be sitting in the closet. Um, and then the other main point, main reason why I went with this system is to have access to the Unify access points, which are really good. This is a, this is a mesh access point, but I'm not using it as a mesh access point. You can see using it just, um, just a single access point here, power over ethernet. Uh, this is giving power over ethernet. So one cable going into that and that's it. Uh, temporarily set up right here, just because I haven't got anything else set up in the house. Um, you know, it, it works just fine right now. If I do a speed test directly from the Unify OS, you can see that I get consistently two gigabit down and then 2.2 gigabits up. In the mornings or during the day with the over provisioning, it kind of stays at about 2.2 down and 2.2 up. So uh, the speed, advertised speed from AT&T Fiber of two gigabits is, is actually, you know, you can actually get it uh, wired if you have the correct setup. So why did I go with two gig instead of five gig? Well, as amazing as, you know, five gig is the, uh, the servers that you're pulling from really can't saturate that connection. And realistically, the only reason why you would go with something like two gig or five gig is if you have a lot of users uploading and downloading at the same time. Um, I wanted something more than one gig, but I really couldn't justify that five gig. Uh, even 
uploading to YouTube, for example, you can't even saturate that one gig connection because YouTube just won't ingest uh, videos that quickly. They just did, they just kind of cut you off, really. Uh, I think probably, what, 30, 40 megabytes per second upload. Um, so that's like 300, 400 megabits at, at, at most. So, um, you know, even YouTube isn't really a good uh, excuse to use two gigabit ethernet or two gigabit connection. But, you know, just having it is, is, is kind of amazing. So, you know, that's just a quick look at the network setup that I've got here and here. Hopefully, uh, you know, this was interesting for you guys. If you're looking at AT&T U-verse, you know, fiber connection, you can at least know what to expect. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions about uh, this setup that I've got here or AT&T U-verse, go ahead and comment down below um, and I'll try to answer the questions as they come in. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.